Magic Paintbrush, Chapter 11 Amy woke to Luna's beak, hovering millimeters from her nose. Her eyes didn't just stare into her soul, they scoured the fine print. You're awake, he shouted, or started to shout before Amy grabbed his beak, so it came out more like, you're a more. She put her finger to her lips, but couldn't help grinning. Morning sunlight made Luna's fur glow and his feathers glimmer. Last year, when she'd abandoned her art box account, she'd scorned loose Luna's mismatched design. But maybe her little kid self had been onto something. Luna bounded in a circle around her bed, jiggling her mattress. I've been waiting for hours. You sleep a lot. Your grandma woke up ages ago. I heard her. I smelled her, too. Or maybe that was her breakfast. Do we get breakfast? The brush, Amy thought. She couldn't remember where she'd stashed it before falling asleep. Frantically, she patted around her, flipping back the covers. Just as panic dug its claws in, she found the brush tucked beneath her pillow. The churning in her stomach settled. Stay here and stay quiet, she told Luna. I'll go see about breakfast. Lao Lao sat poring over papers at the dining table. Her glasses perched low on her nose, magnifying her brown eyes as she shuffled through the stacks of newspaper clippings. As Amy came closer, she saw both English and Chinese printed on the faded paper. There was even some French. Did Lao Lao read French? A floorboard creaked beneath Amy's toes. Lao Lao raised her head. Ah, oh, good morning, she smiled. A smile deepened her crow's feet. How did you sleep? All right, Amy said. Truthfully, she hadn't closed her eyes until long after flushing streets went quiet. She and Luna had stayed up whispering. Luna seemed to know Amy's life in minute detail up until about fifth grade. He remembered some stuff, like the terrarium she'd made at summer camp after kindergarten, and the time her parents let her have three scoops of ice cream after she won the second grade science fair. Better than she did. But most of the things she'd done since starting middle school were a mystery to him. He'd been eager to get caught up. Amy had forgotten what a great listener he was. Well, of course he was a good listener. She laughed at herself. He was made up. Who else was he going to listen to? There's milk in the refrigerator and buns in the freezer, Lala said. Do you want me to steam some for you? Yeah, that sounds good. Thanks. She watched Lala clear away her papers. She'd meant to wait and ask for breakfast, but excitement got the better of her. Afterward, can I meet up my, with my friend Diego? I really need to talk to him about something. All right, if he doesn't live far, Lala said. We're going to get a boba place a few blocks away, Amy said. It won't take long, I promise. And I'll bring you back some boba. You'll love it. This place is the best in Flushing. She had to promise Luna boba, too and at least four different types of pastries before he begrudgingly agreed to hide in her room while she met up with Diego. Even then, he batted big, sad eyes at her as she left. The bubble tea shop had just opened, and there was only one customer inside. Grinning, Amy slid into the chair across from him. How come you always steal my order? Diego pushed his slush towards her. Since when is it your order? I've been ordering lychee slush since... Since we became friends, Amy said, which is when you stole my order. Diego grumbled good-naturedly while she drank the slush. His dark hair curled beneath his ears. He fiddled with it constantly to keep it out of his face. He'd worn his hair super short for years, but had grown it longer recently. His mom, Mrs. Ruiz, complained about it every time Amy saw her. Amy thought it looked pretty good. Judging from the whispers she overheard, the other girls in their grade thought so, too. The knowledge filled her with a mix of amusement, pride, and unease. She tried not to think about it too much. So, what's the big emergency? Diego asked. With a flourish, Amy set the jade paintbrush on the table. I found this. Diego weighed the brush in his hand. Pretty cool, he raised his eyebrow. But not really, we have to meet up right now, Level. Amy smiled. That's because you haven't seen it in action. She dragged him to a side alley by the boba shop, then checked to make sure no one was looking before taking out her sketchbook and paints. Diego watched her, mystified. 
What's something you've always wanted? She asked. World peace? To make varsity wrestling? For that bodega down the street? To not be out of peanut butter ice cream every time I go? Peanut butter ice cream, Amy said. That one I can do. Do? Diego etched. What do you mean, do? But Amy had already started to paint. Drawing a tub of ice cream was simple enough. She added shading to give it depth, then labeled it peanut butter ice cream, just to make sure. A familiar twinge of doubt snuck in just as she painted the M in cream. She tweaked the painting some more, brushing over highlights, straightening out crooked lines. Finally, she decided it was good as it was going to get. Watch, she told Diego, and laughed at his dumbstruck expression when an ice cream tub popped out of the page. No way. How'd you do that? He poked at the tub, then tore off the lid. Amy held her breath, anxious that the inside would be empty like the orange, but no, there was rich brown ice cream. Diego stuck his finger in the ice cream and licked it, and sputtered, and spat. Ugh, Amy, it tastes like soap. Amy's face fell. Was that on purpose? Diego demanded, still spitting. No, Amy sighed. She caught Diego up on everything, how she'd accidentally broken the brush and realized it was special when it repaired itself, how she'd brought Luna to life, then tried to draw the orange in the chocolate bar. She showed him the list of rules she'd written in her sketchbook, Things aren't turning out the way I want them to, she admitted. Wait, 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 Diego gripped her shoulders. He smiled so big she could see all of his teeth. Not turning out the way you want them to? Can we go back to the part where Luna's alive? Your imaginary friend? He shook his head in wonder. Can I meet him? Meet him? Now that he'd voiced it, it seemed like an obvious question. Of course Diego would want to meet Luna. And Diego was her best friend. Of course she'd say yes. So why was she hesitating? Maybe because Luna had always been hers and hers alone. Even when she'd shared stories or drawings about him, she controlled how much people knew. Luna was personal. Luna was everything she dreamed about being when she was little, bold fearless, funny, adventurous. She still dreamed about being those things. She'd just grown up and accepted that it wasn't in the cards. And it was embarrassing to let others see her old hopes. But Diego looked so eager that she relented. I guess you can meet him, but help me figure out this brush first. There's got to be a way to make it more predictable. Challenge accepted. Diego reached for the brush. Can I try? Amy waved for him to go ahead and watched as he painted a laptop. Diego wasn't very interested in most kinds of art, but he did like comics. When he and Amy were younger, they'd spent hours drawing on their own. He still had a cool comic book style that she loved. The finished laptop slid onto the ground. They both pressed close to inspect it. But when Diego tried to flip up the screen, nothing happened. The two halves were welded together. Maybe it's better at living things, he said. Amy wasn't so sure. She shuddered at the thought of a creature that was empty like an orange. She started to voice her concerns, but too late, Diego had already drawn a pigeon. A stuffed bird plopped onto the street. It seemed like a normal plushie. So Amy picked it up and smiled at its button eyes. Hey, that's actual, actually pretty cute. Wasn't aiming for cute, Diego complained. I was aiming for a real live bird. Maybe we're not good enough artists. You were good enough to get Luna, Diego said. Is he just like you imagined him? I, I guess he is. Then you must have been doing something right when you painted him. He made her walk through exactly what she'd done, step by step. Then he made her lie down and close her eyes and do it all over again. Amy felt pretty ridiculous and kind of gross lying on the ground, since she hadn't done anything special at all. There must have been something, Diego insisted. 
they passed his slush back and forth, pondering. Do you think there are other magical paintings? He said suddenly. Ones that come to life when you put the brush back together? Amy imagined canvases spitting out flowers and bowls of fruit all over the world. Had she accidentally created chaos? I don't know. You think your grandma knows about the brush? No way, she laughed. If she did, why would it be tossed in a cardboard box like that? It's probably just an antique she picked up somewhere. She's big on collecting stuff. What if it's, like, cursed? In movies and stuff, magical stuff is always cursed. Well, don't jinx it, Amy scolded. Are you going to tell your grandma? Everything in Amy rebelled at the idea. Everything except a kernel of common sense. That bit just made her feel sheepish. The rest of her insisted that if she told Lao Lao about the magic paintbrush, it would be as good as gone. And how could she give up something so wondrous? Sure, she said. Eventually.